Welcome to the podcast, Patrick from Fit for an Autopsy. It's very rare that I get to see you play the night before. So I scrapped everything. I changed the entire interview. Um, so it's going to be better. <laughs> it's going to be cool. so much better. Awesome. How are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm waking up currently trying to get my day started. Typical late night after the show. So just kind of trying to get it together. I felt the same way. I woke mm-hmm. up and was like, better get that red lipstick on, girl, because you got an interview to do. <laughs> So I just want to talk about something yesterday happened so fast and I have so many emotions. There's like an aftershock of emotions for musicians getting to tour again. Also as a fan, seeing one of my favorite bands. And I think we established last night that you guys are my favorite band, which is weird because I don't like to have a favorite band. I think that's weird, but it happened really fast. Now it's over. Now I'm sad. Are you having big emotions as well? I mean, being back on tour is pretty incredible. It's been a rough couple of years for, you know, I would say every band in the entire world is going through the same thing, you know, and there's a lot of bands that still aren't getting to tour. So it has definitely been tough and it's been difficult to deal with. But being back is like a crazy mixture of emotions. Like I'm happy to be playing shows. I'm happy to be back, but there's also like the idea where we have to be cautious and careful. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, pretty crazy things, but the main focus is staying safe so we can finish the tour. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think at the end of all this, I'll be able to sort my emotions about it. But right now I'm just kind of in work mode where it's like, okay, let's keep the team safe. Make sure we're all wearing masks. You know, if we're going to be in public, do the right thing. Like it's just been like kind of a, uh, a focus of work more than emotions. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what being in business mode, how was it getting ready for this tour? Would you, did you do anything differently to get ready for this tour versus other ones, just masks and being healthy and everything like that? Yeah. I mean, buy your masks, get your immune defense stuff and just get in the van and get moving. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's nothing completely different about anything. It's kind of like practice and go, but I mean, there was a lot of anticipation because it's been so long since we could work. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And hope for the best and just hope Hope, for the best. Hope for the best plan for the worst. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. And you were actually in the crowd wearing your mask. Good for you. So you were Mm -hmm. actually, you were actually doing that. Absolutely. It's so much harder to be safe, like in metal. And I've been going to like a lot of hardcore shows and that's just everyone jumping up and like grabbing the mic. So that's, you know, it's worse than, it's worse than metal. Hardcore is worse than metal. So you, at least you don't have people like jumping up and like screaming into your mic. That is maybe not screaming in the mic, but there certainly certainly were a lot of people on stage yesterday. Yesterday was probably one of the biggest like stage dive shows that we've had in a minute. So it was definitely, uh, Definitely a lot more people on stage than I had anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Texas. That's what, yeah, we're, we're so Texas good for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, all I'm trying to say is um, how precious this music is that we love. Um, may we never take it for granted. Yesterday came and left. I'm very sad now. I don't know how to feel because, you, you know, music comes back. You get that feeling. And then the show was over so quickly yesterday. So I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that. For some reason. Yeah, always, it went fast. Always go to the show. It went so fast. I feel like that was the fastest show I ever went to in my entire life. But usually if the show goes by quick, it means it's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if the show is a long day, it means that you had a shitty day and you had to deal with a lot of headaches. But I mean, Anthony and the whole team at Come Take is incredible and got to see a lot of friends and faces that we haven't seen in a while. So the day kind of ripped past really quick and the crowd was incredible yesterday. So it was, it was, it was all of the things that made it a good day. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any bands that you're looking forward to seeing after quarantine COVID? Uh, I want to see Gojira. Um, I'm, I'm like looking forward to that. I heard Meshuggah is planning some touring. Kind of want to see Meshuggah really bad. Um, I don't know. There's a handful of bands that are starting to, you know, announce tours and do things in the States that I'm excited about. Y'all are being the example. You're going out and doing it on like a six week tour, six weeks, six weeks. Yeah. 
Yeah. And who are all the bands you're on tour with? Um, I met some of them um, last night. It's Great American Ghost, Signs of the Swarm, Enterprise Earth, and Ingest. There you go. Yeah, there were, it's kind of weird. How do you find about, how do you find out about new metal? Because there were bands that were like, oh, we've been around for 16 years. And it's so weird, like the barrier of entry of like the bands I know about, the bands I don't know about. What do you pay attention to? Like Spotify, new playlists? We get a lot of stuff from Will. Will's really in the know with a lot of bands. Um, we all share things that we find. You know, we have a group chat for the band that constantly is like having new bands, new music put in there. And then, you know, when you play music, you kind of spend a lot of time on the internet listening. You know what I mean? It's just it's kind of the same way everybody else does. I feel like people are a little lazy when it comes to like discovering new music because it's readily available. You know, when I was a kid in the you know dark ages before the internet existed, we would do tape trades or you would go to a show and like meet a merch person and then take their address and like mail each other demos and like, do like work for it. And now that it's so available, people not knowing about new music, I mean, I'm guilty of it too, but it it's just one of those things that it's so readily available. There's just no excuse anymore. So it, it's, you know, sometimes I fall behind on some stuff and I'm like, man, how did I miss this kind of thing? But generally speaking, I try to keep up, you know? Yeah. I'm super guilty of that. Like my favorite thing is still to go back and like, listen to my favorite bands from high school. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's how yeah. I get trapped in it for sure. And I haven't even like really done, I was so attached to your last album. I haven't done like the deepest dive on the new one. I've listened to all the tracks. But I'm so attached to like the last one, like now seeing it live. Now I'm like hopping into it. Oh, I agree. It's a, there's there's times where like a record will come out, but I'm so stuck on another record, either it be from the same band or another band that I like it takes me a good three or four months before I can dive into the new thing because I'm just like so focused on what I like at that time. And I think that's pretty normal. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. then you hear something that, like resonates and you're like, Oh, I got to get into this. And then it happens. You know what I mean? Or maybe you'll listen to the whole thing and you won't be in the right headspace to connect with it. And then three months later you listen again, you're like, wow, how did I miss this? You know what I mean? So it's just, it's all timing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I definitely agree with that. The album, um, what did I put down? It feels like the Lord of the Rings kind of epic. It feels like a huge IMAX movie and it's definitely a lot of the tracks are a little bit slower which is cool Mm -hmm. and deeper and the towers um so it really feels really epic so I think you have to be ready to hop into it how did you guys um get ready or what were you guys thinking about going to do the new record because it it feels like an IMAX movie to me it feels well look at look at our And look at the things that have happened in our country over the course of the past two years. Like it, it seems like a movie across the world. We have a global pandemic that seems like some crazy science fiction movie. It doesn't feel real. You know, <clears throat> there's this like over looming thing where your life is kind of at risk every day, all the time, <laughs> according to the news and everything else, you know, it's like, it seems so fake. Like it doesn't seem like real. And then, then you have like all the social things that have happened in our country in the past couple of years and weird political things that have happened. It all seems movie-like, you know, like this, um, weird, uh, iconic businessman becomes president and all of these weird things start happening around it. And then he turns out to be a terrible human and all of these different things are happening. And it just seems like a script, right? It doesn't seem real. And so the record is a reflection of everything that's going on around us. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's, there's just a lot to grasp onto right now, whether it be political or social or what, you know, health issues, like there's just tons of stuff. So it, the record is the reflection of the world around us right now. I mean, just, just the mockery of, the presidency and all of those things that happened is enough. And then you have everything else piled on top of it. It's, it's incredible that people don't have more to write about. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty nuts. Agreed. And actually 
you should do stand up comedy. Like some of the things you were saying there were like <laughs> making me laugh. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. It's not, and the funny thing is, is it's it's not a joke. It's like that's what the fuck is going on right now. You know what I mean? Like the world is completely upside down. We're in some kind of like weird sci-fi movie, and it's just it's a fucking mess, you know. And it it really made for us to have a lot of fuel, and and that's where the record came from. You know, Will is very in touch with social and political and environmental things, and there was so much of that going on all at the same time that you just there's just too much subject matter you know what I mean so is that how you guys wrote I'm trying to like figure out the best way to say this and maybe you can even help me out with this but the songs like the tempo and the lead up to everything feels bigger than anything I've ever listened to before do you know what I'm talking about yeah it's it's like So we've been like inching towards this for a really long time. And it's like a discovery process on what you're capable of. Like each element of the band changed as a new member came in. And I would say when Absolute Hope hit and we got Joe, we started to discover that we could move into different, um, I I don't want to say move into different genres, but take pieces of different styles of music and incorporate it with what we're doing, right? So when you're limited by a person or persons in the band and their ability, you know, you, you can only do so much. So when we had Nate, Nate was a great singer, but he was kind of a one-trick pony. He was really good at one or two things. And Joe is really good at a lot of things. So that gave us the ability to kind of put our fingers into different cookie jars and and like get more dynamics. We could build more things. And, and once we realized that we could really hone in on that it's just kind of like the progression so then we did the great collapse which was even more further into adding post-rock and rock influences and you know a lot more melodic stuff and a little bit of singing and then we're like you know what let's take this further and then we did the sea of tragic beast and joe really shined on a few tracks on that record we're like man we can really focus on this so if the vocals are going to be that epic, the music has to be that epic, and then we can take it to the next level. And that's just the progression that you have with anything. You know, if your band is the kind of band that wants to stick to a genre and create a type of music that keeps you with staying power in that world, then you don't have to worry about that. But when you want to explore new things, you have to constantly focus on that. So every new addition to the band, every new person to the band, every new um, possibility with the band brought us to where we're at right now. And, you know, without a couple of key elements, we wouldn't have been able to do it. So it's, it's, we just want to progress, you know? Yeah. Well, it is as an avid metalhead, someone who's been in love with the genre since I've been in 15. Um, it feels like one of the biggest, most incredible things I've ever listened to, honestly. And I don't give false oh. compliments. So thank you guys. I know you, you know. I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> you're, you're a straight shooter. You know, we've had enough conversations for me to know that. And, and I appreciate the kind words. It's fucking cool. So thank you. Yeah. And maybe not the last time I'll thank you during the interview, but thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for touching. We appreciate our lives. it. Yeah. Thank you. So as epic as the music is this beautiful artwork that you guys came Uh, out with so unexpected so nurturing Mm -hmm. beautiful vulnerable earthy um can you talk all about that it's so beautiful um i mean in all reality we've been working with adam burke for three three records now i think since the great collapse he did and uh he just understands kind of where we're going with everything and he's got a good grasp on what we want to do as a band and he understands how to visually take what we do and present it. So we go to him with this idea of like this broken nature image, trying to nurture the the earth. It's like this whole long thing that we went to him with and he, he really nailed it. You know, the idea of, you know, having somebody who can, 
visually express what we're trying to do with our music is incredible. You know, and you go back to C's and you look, it's, you know, this kind of beautiful landscape type thing, but there's something evil poisoning the water. And it, it kind of reflects the idea of like humans, like swimming through this poisoned water, you know, kind of like melancholy kind of idea. And it, it just works. And if you open up that record, you can look through and you can see all the different layers of things going on in the water. And there's so much in there. So he just gets how to take our imagery that we try to create lyrically and put it to paper and that's that's almost unheard of you know you usually and we don't want to do your typical album cover we're not your regular deathcore <laughs> excuse me deathcore band so we want to give a little bit more and make it a little more interesting there's a really funny comment about it on the internet i actually met the guy who said the comment last night he said that our album covers are starting to look more and more like evil bob ross paintings <laughs> I was going to bring him up. So that guy's from Austin. Yeah. He's from Austin. He was ridiculous. <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> really, really funny. funny. Yeah. yeah. So super cool. Um, random question. Yeah. Just thought about it. Okay. So kind of thank you for going there with me. Cause you kind of got what I was talking about of like the epicness of the feeling of everything. Random yeah. ass question. If you were to like film a music video for two towers, any place in the world, would it be like a temple in Nepal? Like that's just like automatically, well, like I think a temple in Nepal or like a building with a thousand candles or something like that. Random question. Well, you know, if y'all were doing a video, what would it be? We did a video. We did. We did a full animated video. No, I know. So that. I've seen, I've seen animated, yeah, yeah. but okay. if um, you were to know. like do a live video of you guys playing in a video and I have, I've seen the video. I've seen the animated. Yeah. Um, I guess I like the idea of like, maybe if we did it differently, like having like an insane asylum kind of idea going on or like some kind of like, I mean, it would have to be some kind of like prison or jail setting or something where a person is trapped away from their two sides of themselves and what they are and what they want to be kind of idea. But the idea of an insane asylum or something along those lines works really good because like the idea is, you know, uh, for me, the, the song is about never being able to get to where you need to be to complete the person that you are because of all the space and things in between, right? Having two versions of yourself locked away from each other. You know what I mean? So it's just like one of those things to me where. I love the animated videos, so it's kind of hard for me to say because I feel like it's so cool. We've never done anything like that before. And I also love a video that I don't have to be in, right? So, so that's really cool too. But I don't know, just something maybe like, like an old castle with like two high points where you could kind of get the same feel as what was in the video or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a difficult question just because I do love our current video. So, yeah. but yeah, some, some kind of place with filled with desperation that you just can't get out of, I guess is the best way I could put it. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. That was a, we can kick it or leave it. I don't know. Maybe we'll leave it in, but it was just a random feeling I had like, oh, I don't know, like it, that song makes you want to go to a castle or an insane asylum. And to me it like, I want to go to church. So metal's funny, That's right? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what are some of your favorite guitar parts off of the new record? Let's get into guitar mode. Um, I really like everything about Far From Heaven. I like that bouncy riff in the beginning. And I think when the faster, more like intense part kicks in, it's just such a huge difference between the two that it's like a punch in the face every time you play it. Um, I'm really happy with uh, my guitar solos. I'm, it, especially in Pandora, it's really like different. It's not like some kind of show off shreddery thing. It's more like fits the bill for the part really well. And I'm really like stoked about that. Um, there's a part that I love a lot, but it's probably one of the most difficult sections on the whole record. And it's also in Pandora, uh, Pandora. the end of that song is really hard to play, but when it locks in, it sounds incredible. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I like on the new record. I really like Tim's, 
um, solos on that record. Like I, I think he <laughs> like nailed everything that he did on that record. And, you know, as much as I hate admitting it, I do love him <laughs> sitting here like giving me crap while I'm doing this. But um, yeah, I mean, the record's great. I think all the performances on the record are great. I think Joe really shined a lot on the record. I think blue has some really interesting lines, like in the more like open airy kind of moody stuff we did on the record. Like he, he definitely like shines in a lot of that stuff. Cause you can hear him walking the bass through all those parts. I just, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that's different for us on this record. So I don't know. I, I like a lot of it for a lot of different reasons. Awesome. What are a few or what's your favorite lyric off the new album? What do you think hits um, the best? Uh, the all is calm and then comes the killing part. Oh, I love that is, part. I love that part so epic. much. Fucking epic because it's just Joe. And and then the way the breakdown hits afterwards, like that's a really cool little like grab them live kind of part. Um, I like uh, I I like the we are what you created part in far from heaven like the idea of like you know we are only what you've made for us to be you know what i mean that whole thing is really good i mean again great lyrical content on a lot of the record but yeah those two parts stand out to me a lot yeah i super love those so much as well i'm not a musician i'm not a guitar player so many people who will be tuning in are um people i don't know how relevant this is um, do you want to talk about like what you tune to most often or we use, we use two tunings, um, yeah. drop a and drop G on seven string guitars. So that's just the low string on the standard tuning dropped, you know, one whole step. And then the drop G stuff is the whole guitar tuned down one step and then the low string tuned down one step again. So you get, you know, your drop G, um, we just do it because it just nice to have a little bit of dynamic sound changes, differences in tone, like sonically different between the songs. Um, and you'll notice like most of the time, the stuff that's tuned down a bit tends to be a little bit slower and a little bit more moody. And, you know, the stuff that's tuned in a seems tends to be like a little bit more aggressive playing, you know? So it, it's kind of, it kind of, just adds to the dynamic of the band. Love it. And what guitars do you play with and what do you want to talk about gear wise? Um, recently, like a year ago, I started working with Jackson guitars and um, I'm really super excited. They have a lot of really great stuff coming out. Um, uh, Mike Tempesta and the whole team over at Jackson have been unbelievably good to me. And so I'm really excited to work with them. Um, I've actually been touring this whole tour with uh, a 5150, uh, EDH 5150 Iconic, and um, I've been using uh, the Synergy uh, amp module setup, and I've been kind of blending them on the tour, and really, really good tones out of that stuff. Um, you know, I, it it's one of those things when, when it comes to gear, like, you know, you, you kind of use what works for you, but recently I've been discovering a whole bunch of new stuff, and I'm pretty excited about my rig right now. So it's been, it's been fun, a fun nerd tour for me because I get to use a bunch of new stuff. All the work, all the fans, all the music. Yay. So after last night watching everyone go crazy in the crowd, um, you guys mean so much to so many people. What's one of the best compliments or one of the best stories anyone's ever told you? Um, I mean, there's just an overwhelming amount of people like, telling us how great the new record is and how good we sound live and how happy they are to see the band and to see us back on tour. And, you know, I had a, <clears throat> I had a young lady come to me the other day and she told me that, uh, you know, the music saved her life and that, you know, through the pandemic, like our music helped her a bunch that that kind of stuff is massive. You know what I mean? And I've had so many folks come up and say so many great things about the band and it's just, any kind of compliment, especially now when it's been so long since we've been able to get out is, is super humbling and like, cool. You know, we really, mm -hmm. we really are lucky to be growing and at a time where it's just hard to get out of your house and we're lucky that people are paying attention. So 
every compliment, whether it just be like, Hey, your show was great all the way down. So like, you know, this music helped me get through some of the hardest times. Like any of that stuff is incredible. So we'll take it all. And we take it with, in a way where it's like, it means something to us, you know? Absolutely. And it truly feels, um, your music truly feels like we feel on the inside. So the fact that you guys can achieve that is just so incredible. Yeah. So it's just like, I'm not done thanking you and I'll probably thank you one more time for it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> yeah. And so, um, so I wanted to talk shop now, literally your tattoo shop in Atlanta, mm-hmm. it's Rose Gold Tattoo, right? Yep. That's right. So what do you specialize in? Um, traditional American is kind of my favorite, but I also like doing some like illustrative stuff and I've been stepping more into like black and gray cause I'm working with a couple of guys that are really good at it now, but it's kind of like mixed bag for me, but American traditional is where my heart lies with tattooing. Awesome. Yeah. I super love traditional tattoos. Um, yeah. I was told by one of my favorite bands, favorite lyrics when I was 17, don't get that. So I was going to start off with lyrics on the rib cage. Then I was going to sleeve out and he told me no. So I don't have any because nothing could or ever would mean more to me than what he told me not to get. So that's why I don't have any, but I love yeah. traditional, but I love that. So well, much. I mean, you could always get a traditional tattoo with the lyrics worked into it. I don't know. Like he, what I wanted, he told me not to get and they're his words. So he, I mean, he told me, he was like, no, I don't want you to do that. I mean, who was he to tell you what to do with your body? Damn it. It's your life. You do whatever you want. Oh, he's Aaron Lewis from Stained. Come on. You can say anything. I mean, <laughs> Aaron, Lewis from, Aaron Lewis from Stained doesn't own you. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't know. It's hard to, I don't know, hard to get past get, that get, time in my life with the music and how much everything meant, I would say. I get the, I get the sentiment. I'm just kind of yeah. busting chops a little bit, but you got to do what's right for you. You know what I mean? So Yeah, absolutely. Well, if I didn't stand firm and double down on it, then it would mean nothing. So I have to double down. Facts. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, what's on top of your head? Um, It's just like a skull. Oh, can we see the... You're going to make me do it. Can I? I want it. Wow. Yeah. um, A guy named Mike Rubendahl, who's like probably one of my top 10 tattooers. He's out of Long Island, Massapequa, Long Island. The shop is called Kings Avenue Tattoo. He's incredible. And uh, he did that maybe like 10 years ago or so. And uh, he's, he's one of my, one of my inspirations. He's an incredible tattooer and uh, yeah, he's super nice guy. Love it. And I love um, regal medieval things. I love a little crown on top of it. Very cool. It's uh, it's called a Vajra. It's uh, it's like a Tibetan weapon. It's like oh, a it? pretty cool thing. Yeah, yeah. What's the what is it? What kind of weapon? Um, it's just this like daggery kind of looking thing. <clears throat> but the idea of the tattoo is protection. You know, protection from my own brain, protection from bad thoughts, and so putting something that represents your mortality on your head above your brain where all the thoughts come from it's this whole thing i was going through at the time but yeah i i, I kind of kicked the concept at him a little bit and that's what he came up with and i really loved it awesome and um it also protects you from 5g as well right yes it protects me from <laughs> 5g and all of the aliens that are coming to our country currently yay here you go <laughs> is that your favorite what's on your knuckles by the way I was looking at people's um, knuckles last night. It says uh, fade away because it's the idea of like, you know, the idea of not burning out quickly, but fading away, like being here for a long time. You know, uh, the bottom set that says headbang. And then below that is a memorial tattoo for my sister that passed away a few years ago. Um, and across the tops of my knuckles, it says defiance, which is, lyrics from the song iron moon so it's uh that's one, one of my favorite tracks that we do and uh yeah so i've destroyed myself you know. <laughs> but and everyone's going and everyone's gonna go listen to defiance right now right yeah, now do that's, it. iron moon has got the good got the good lyrics in it 
It's a good yeah. one. I love that. Well, yep. Thank you for sharing. Um, I almost totally forgot that you and your kiddo did a takeover on my Instagram a few years ago. How is your kid yeah. doing? What's how do, he's, he's, what's he into these great. days? Uh, football, um, which is awesome because dad's not a sports person whatsoever. So I, uh, I'm pretty proud of him for choosing his own path. You know, our house is music and art and tattoos and he's fallen into playing sports, which I'm super excited for him for. Um, he played one season and got the coaches award at a big banquet. So he's doing really well with that and just school and video games and being a kid and, you know, enjoying his time. He's a, uh, he's a really good kid and I, I'm proud of him. So, you know, it's kind of cool to watch him grow up and, and be a good human. I love that. So, That's so sweet. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Okay, last question. So can you kind of fill us in what you guys have planned for the rest of the year? Are you just going to tour the rest of the year, I hope? Well, unfortunately, with COVID, things are not as easy as what we would like it to be. Um, we're trying to tour as much as we can. But, you know, the unfortunate part is, is that certain places and certain areas are locking down and things are getting a little difficult all over the world. You know, the States is pretty lucky that we can get out there and tour and do what we're doing. But um, the European tour might be a little difficult, but we do have a European tour planned for May. Um, we were supposed to do uh, Mexico and Central, excuse me, Central America. But um, unfortunately, it looks like that's going to get put off. And uh, we're trying to do Southeast Asia. We're trying to go to Australia. We're trying to get back to Canada. And we are working super hard to get back out and, you know, go play for all the people that support us all over the world. But Unfortunately, right now, it's things are kind of like a little shaky. So um, if you watch our socials and keep an eye on what we're doing, you can, you know, see all the things that we're doing and what we're trying to do and how we're trying to get things done. And um, hopefully we can get out and play as many places as we can over the next year or so. Yeah, 